Hello everyone, welcome back to my project box. Today I would like to talk about the, this little interesting device that the kind people of Sonoff sent me in the mail. This is a Sonoff Mini R4, but this one is the M version. Now M stands for matter, so it's a little bit different. Quite interesting if you ask me. This one can be controlled locally via um, matter-enabled devices like uh, your Google Home, or the Apple ecosystem or Alexa, um, which is quite interesting, which means you don't have to rely on any servers in other countries going down and you're losing control of your device. It also means you don't have to flash third party firmware on it if you don't feel like you could just control it directly with matter. So interesting. Um, now, there is one little problem with it. It's not a no neutral device. So you do need a neutral wire behind the light switch. So if you don't feel like pulling a neutral wire to the light switch, you you have a little bit of a problem there. Um, now, I know that um, Sonoff do a no neutral Zigbee version, but it is Zigbee. So this one doesn't need a neutral, but uh, unfortunately they haven't released the matter version of this yet. So until then, um, I thought I'd try my no neutral circuit hack on this device and see if it works. Now I've, I've modified my no neutral circuit a bit um, I've listened to people's comments and um, I try to improve it a bit to make it a bit more rugged. And uh, this is what I came up with, these two little modules. This is your uh, neutral splitter that goes to the smart switch, it provides it with a virtual neutral. And this is the bypass module that picks up the neutral um, from the light bulb side, it supplies. So the light bulb supply goes in one side and then comes out the other side and feeds the light bulb, the LED light bulb. So these, uh, these little modules, um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description where you can try them if you don't feel like building them yourself, um, if you just want to test them. And um, if you're one of my patrons, um, if you make a donation, uh, I will have a limited number of these made and I will a select few can try them out from there as well. So you, if you're not a patron yet, please consider becoming a patron. It, you might be able to get one of these. There's only going to be a limited number of them available. So anyway, guys, join me in this video and um, see what happens. See how well these work with different smart switches, including the matter device. So let's start by giving it a live and neutral supply and then connect a light bulb as a load to it. So we can set it up with my phone on Google Home. Samsung Smart Things picked it up straight away as a matter device, but I proceeded to rather go with Google Home instead. Adding it to Google Home was uh, straightforward. I just had to add a new device. It picked it up rather quickly. And then all I had to do is scan the QR code when prompted. And it really quickly just added it straight away. It was that simple. It even popped up uh, a cute little um, picture um, of what the device actually looks like um, in that sort of pretty blue green teal color and before you knew it we had matter control local control without any cloud service and it works now obviously this device requires a neutral connection to power itself so wiring it to a lighting circuit like this with no neutral behind the switch is problematic but luckily, if we connect up my special circuit hack, we can divert the neutral back from the light bulb to the sun off. This allows it to be powered the way it normally would be. But it's still possible for the sun off to turn the light bulb on and off as well. So the switch line now does double duty. It's able to supply both the neutral to power the sun off and also the live supply to power the LED bulb simultaneously. So the main difference between this new improved version of my no neutral circuit and the old circuit is that the fusible resistor is no longer in line with the load. So it doesn't act as a fuse for uh, the light bulb itself. It only acts as an inrush limiter for the um, charging of the 15 microfarad capacitor. And also if that capacitor were to fail short circuit, it would act as a fuse to protect against that. The reason for me doing this is because 
Some people have mentioned in the comments that their fusible resistor blows. My circuit was originally designed just for one LED light bulb, but I think some people are connecting really powerful LED loads or multiple LED bulbs in parallel. So um, it's not designed for the fusible resistor to handle that amount of current. So in this way, the fusible resistor is only responsible for um, the inrush current on that capacitor and not for protecting the load. I've increased the diodes from 1 amp diodes to 10 amp diodes. These are massively overrated, but they can withstand up to 200 amps for a very short period of time. So that makes it uh, very possible to withstand a circuit breaker trip if anything is connected incorrectly. I've also added a 1 mega ohm resistor across the capacitor. This is to bleed off any charge left behind even if the circuit is disconnected or, or if the light bulb is removed. That stops you from getting any nasty zap from that capacitor that can hold the charge for a long length of time. It's not strictly necessary for normal operation, but it just prevents you getting any nasty surprises from that uh, capacitor. So here you have an ordinary lighting circuit. We have the line feed going to the switch and then the switch line going out to your load which is an LED light bulb and then the neutral completes the circuit on the other side of the LED light bulb and um, as you can see you can turn it on and off as normal. Now what we want to do is we want to put our Sonoff Mini R4, the matter version, where the switch is but of course there's no there's no neutral connection there. So we're going to use one of our no neutral splitter um, to give us a neutral there and our bypass to go there. Now this example of a lighting circuit is uh, not very common in the UK. It's uh, mainly used in Europe and possibly the rest of the world. In the United Kingdom, um, they tend to use a three-plate loop-in system uh, with little junction boxes at each light fitting. This is because they use a type of cable called Twin and Earth. Um, but they do use the European wiring method when it, the wires are wired in singles in conduit. Let's give it a test with Google Home and see if it works. Turn on matter. Hey, turn off matter. Hooray! No neutral required. So as you can see, it all fits pretty neatly inside a, a back box. Um, this could be any back box, a European back box. This is a, a British uh, back box, a plasterboard box. But it's more enough to fit in there. This is a, um, a UK British style light switch. And uh, it works just fine. Turn off matter. We can turn it back on manually. And as you can see, the neutral is here by the neutral bypass, by the light bulb or LED light fitting. And um, there is no neutral connected to here. We only have a live supply, the line feed feeding in, and our multi purpose switch line, which is now carries the neutral and the, the switch line out. And it all fits in there. There's our little neutral splitter in there. Um, the light switch just connects to the S1 and S2 terminals. S1 and S2 go to your light switch. Um, internally, the um, live in and S1 is bridged together. So they are actually just a junction. They're, they're the same thing. This is also um, live in. So you're just picking up the live from there and feeding it to the switch. It's also possible to take your live straight to the switch. And then um, from the switch, uh, you take a, a live feed to supply the son off. 
So there's different ways you can wire it. So I thought I'd demonstrate my circuit with um, multiple um, LED downlighters, uh, multiple light bulbs um, connected to one bypass unit. And uh, it works just fine. Cool. Turn off matter. As you can see, we still have uh, Wi-Fi control as well. So um, it works just fine. Um, now, in my old design, I only designed it for one LED light bulb. So if you connected too much load, you could burn your fusible resistor out. So now the fusible resistor, the position has been changed. It's no longer in line with the switch live. It's only in line with the capacitor. So it's just for in-rash limiting for the capacitor. And if the capacitor has a um, short circuit or develops a fault, the fusible resistor will um, act like a fuse and stop anything nasty from happening there. Um, but uh, yeah, so we can now switch bigger loads without um, any problem. So I thought I'd demonstrate that it's possible to use this um, no neutral bypass um, circuit uh, with other smart switches as well. Um, this is the Sonoff M5 range. Um, which does require a neutral um, but you can create a virtual neutral with the neutral splitter and my bypass circuit so it uses one of the channels um, only one is necessary to pick up uh, the neutral and then to generate a virtual neutral from that channel from its uh, switch line um, to power the um, Sonoff M5 and uh, it works um, it works fine so that's a, a, a normal straight channel without bypass. Uh, that's another straight channel without bypass. And this is the, um, the one with the virtual neutral through the switch line. So now it's possible to power this smart switch without a neutral as well, if you don't have a neutral behind the light switch box. And there's... Um, there's uh, the ones with the LED panel. There's, there's various ones like this, the, the touch one as well. They all require neutrals, and you can use this circuit if, if, you, if you need a neutral behind the light switch. It works just fine. It's a little bit hard to see here because it's a bit convoluted, but um, it does work. And um, you saw that in my previous uh, version as well. It's just that this one is uh, a little bit more robust and improved. So you can um, have multiple light bulbs connected to each channel or have a more powerful LED bulbs connected. So in conclusion, these little modules here, um, they work great with um, all these devices that I've tested it with here. And um, various uh, smart light switches and smart relays. And uh, that's great. You guys have also tested um, the previous version of this circuit with various other uh, smart smart switches, some some two yard branded um, type as well. Um, I must stress that it doesn't work with all of them. And with the previous circuit design, um, some people have reported that you have to reverse the diodes. So obviously, I can't verify that if you get these from me, that they will work with everything. I can tell you that they definitely work with these Sonoff products and uh, definitely with the Shelly one. Now, um, the reason I, th I, I want to make these modules available is um, not everybody feels comfortable building circuits that operate on directly on mains voltage. And um, I wanted to make something that's a bit more um, bulletproof, a bit more sort of um, harder to damage the components. So a lot more rugged. So instead of using the peeny little 1 amp diodes, I use these massive um, 10 amp diodes. And um, it's, it's going to make for a much more robust uh, system. And uh, I've also changed the uh, fusible resistor for a 2 watt version and uh, changed the value to 5 ohms. And um, I added a, a discharge resistor of one mega ohm across the capacitor, so there's no um, charge that stays across the pins. And um, I've changed the value of the capacitor to 15 microfarads, 400 volts. 
So there's a few changes made. So um, if you guys don't feel comfortable building these sort of uh, mains operated circuits yourself, but you still want to try it out, um, feel free to um, use the link in the description to try and get hold of some of these. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, trying out my circuits and giving me loads of feedback. And I'll hope to see you on the next one.